All right, good morning, everyone. This is Nicholas Rodina with Sound Nerds Unite and other things. <laughs> this is a daily RF coordination in real time. Um, I've done a bunch of these. Um, if you have any questions about uh, just some general RF things, coordination things, there's plenty of other videos um, on this Sound Nerds Unite channel um, or on soundnerdsunite.com. Lots of, lots of ways to get some more info. But basically, I'm gonna walk through my daily coordination in real time from the minute I kind of launched the program. Using Sure Wireless Workbench, um, and a bunch of Sure gear, and a little bit of Sennheiser gear. So for things that, first things I do is I do a save as from the previous show. It's just easier for me to, to do this. Um, so today is the 21st, and we are in Saratoga, Saratoga New York. Okay, boom. First thing I do is I delete all the data from the previous show, meaning all the scan data from the previous show. This tends to get me close quickly. And I have got, uh, I've got networked 11 devices. So I've got a bunch of different models of Sure for my inputs. So I've got good old UR4Ds, ULXs, Axiant. And the different bands. I picked one from each and I'm gonna go ahead and start that scan. I'm gonna go to TV channels. I'm gonna uncheck those two. I'm gonna go ahead and let the software find me based on my location services. And then I'm gonna take a quick look at the environment. Sorry, sleepy. This is day four, show, show day four. And something's happening here. It looks like there's some devices on. So I forgot to mention this. Um, looks like uh, the other act possibly might have uh, their ears still on from the night before, which is a common thing I do often too. So before you start your scans, it's always good to make sure everything is off first. So I'm going to go do that right now. All right, I'm back. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, redo that um, because uh, we had some stuff that was on. Stop all. Remove data. Remove data. Is there a way I wonder to do that? No. Once again, if anybody knows how to clear all that data quickly, let me know. All right, we're going to start again. Everything is off for the most part. Starting the scan. We already did our TV channels. Now I'm going to do a scan on a PSM 1000 pack or my ear pack. Um, same thing works with PSM 900s, any networkable uh, piece of gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, my Q pack go into radio full scan mode and then scan the environment and then sync that pack with the transmitter PSM 1000 transmitter and then import that data into wireless workbench so I'm gonna go do that now all right I am back so I've done a scan on my PSM 1000 pack now I'm going to sync my pack with uh, the transmitter PSM 1000 transmitter um, just hit uh, sync spectrum sync scan and then sync your pack with the transmitter I've done that, now I'm going to import that data over the network from hardware. Ears is my first networked unit, which is where I transferred the pack to. Import that. Cancel that dialog. Don't forget to save. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Take a look at the environment. Now, there are some things, some house... Um, transmitters here looks like for ASL and uh, some other things so I, f I found that in one of the racks um, that's probably what this is right there chances are um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to include that because I know what it is um, that's probably what that is right there but we're going to create something here let me look at my phone take a picture of it I think um, so it's always good to ask the house if they've got anything hot. I mean, it'll come up in your scans, but it's good to know what they have. I've got a 530-100. I also noticed that they're transmitting at 100 milliwatts, which is a lot. But I'm not going to alter their stuff at all, of course. Um, PSM 1000. G10. Or is that right? Yeah, G10. Um, so what we're doing here is we're we're adding um, these other two devices that are part of the venue into our 
our coordination even though because one unit is off currently and one unit is on and I want to make sure that I, uh, I consider the one that's off because you never know maybe they're going to turn it on for some reason and I'd rather know about that before they do anything save that and let's see if it showed up anywhere That's probably that guy right there. And since it's um, transmitting 100 milliwatts, which is a lot of power, there's a lot of um, additional kind of noise that comes with that. So it is what it is. All right, so we've completed our scans. I'm going to do a save. And now we're going to just take a look at our red columns. Those are TV channels that we chose earlier or the, the database chose. But sometimes those channels are either in, insignificant because of distance or they're just not online right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up 31, it looks like, and 33, and 34, and 36. 31, 33, oops, 35, 36, is that what I said? Yeah, 35 is definitely something. Okay, cool. So, taking a look, taking a look, taking a look. All right, I could probably open up um, 18 also. Um, let's just see what 18 actually is. Nothing left over from the day before. Okay, cool. Alright, cool. Great, so now what we're going to do, um, the easiest thing I've figured out is to go ahead and coordinate my ears first. So I'm going to delete all this stuff. I'm going to add frequencies from inventory manually. And we're going to coordinate our IEMs first. Bang, bang. I've just noticed over the years that doing it this way, the math for wireless workbench, the process, it seems a bit more efficient. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple spare freaks while I'm at it. And then calculate. Take a look at the environment, see where it put those things. Low is good, looking good, looking good. This is a little bit, eh, calculate again. One more time, one more time, one more time, there we go. This guy right here is what? What is that? Oh, that's the exclusion, copy. So I'm gonna uh, analyze that. I'm gonna lock all these, but I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this one, which is a backup freak. Let's see if we can get a different spot for that. There we go. Looks good. Cool. Now we're going to bring in um, my mic. So. I didn't explain this earlier in, the, in other videos also, but I've included what are called inclusion groups, which allow you to put, put frequencies in certain areas. So rule of thumb is you try to separate your ears from your inputs by at least four megahertz. Um, we have that here just naturally because of these TV channels. Each TV channel is six megahertz, so we're safe. But um, one way I do that is I include I create an exclusion group, um, and then I assign all my ears to the exclusion or inclusion group. Sorry, and then I also create another inclusion group for my inputs. That's all done here first, which I've noticed in this inclusion work through Redina inclusion, and then you can kind of create your own inclusion groups. I have some other videos on that, so if you need some help, um, check those out or just hit me up with a message. All right, now we're gonna um, add the rest of our um, microphones and instruments, our inputs, basically. So our F4 is a guest, rich acoustic, Jerry acoustic, bass, Mark electric, Mark acoustic, Mark five, spare, or three, guest two, no, quattro trumpet, sax, Jerry electric, yep. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of free or a couple of backups 
to these. So 32 total freaks is what we need. Go ahead and calculate. A little, little tight, so I'm gonna go up here and see where it's putting us. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open up some of these units a little bit with their compatibility, which basically is telling Wireless Workbench it's okay to change the distance between your units by a little bit, which tends to give you a bit more space. Um, I've just found that in general this is good with, this is okay with um, higher level units. With lower y models, um, their capabilities aren't as, like the, their RF filtering, a lot of the input circuitry on it from an RF standpoint, from radio standpoint, is the tolerances are not as tight. Um, so you can obviously add a lot more axiant frequencies than you could um, maybe um, a PSM200 or an SLX or something, um, which are fine units, but they're just, the capabilities are different, so. Um, I'm gonna calculate here. Not really helping me out too much, but basically, we've got some backups. Let's see what else is going on here. Open anything else up. Oh, I'm gonna open up 26, actually because nothing's happening there, and boom. Check that one more time, 30. Now this, this right here is some four megahertz that I sometimes create for that space between ears and other things. Stop calculation. I don't need that today because where my, where my ears are ending is about here. And I've got two radio, two stations, TV stations in between, which is 12 megahertz, which is plenty of space. So I'm gonna go here and remove my four megahertz space, which is this blue column right there. Give us a bit more room. Yeah. Yep, great. I also like to take a quick pick peek at um, the vocal and just see where that ended up. Super clean. Okay, great. We're gonna save that. We're gonna analyze. Always analyze. Green is good. Lock the frequencies. Save. Assign and deploy. Deploy to all zones. Now I'm looking at all the receivers for the transmitters, or for the receivers. <laughs> all of the receivers. All of the um, RF meters on the receivers to see if there's any RF activity. There is none, so we're clean. Now I'm going to load up all the frequencies from the PSMs with the antennas off. And on my Q-Pack, we walk out to the deck, take a look at the Q-Pack, looking for RF activity. And if that's all good, I take a listen and then I do a rock show. That's it. Um, any questions, uh, always reach out to me, soundenergyunite.com, org. Of course, my name, Nicholas Radina, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the places. Hope this helps you, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.